Chapter 2. The Secret of Eternity. I said my bedtime prayer and accessed the message in my brain, bypassing the first one just as I had been told. It began with the now distinguishable voice of the brown alien whom I would be referring to from now as the black alien to simplify things. Well, little one, as I said, here is our story. As you have noticed, we are humanoids. A very highly evolved people compared to the humans of Earth. A long time ago the earliest scientists of our planet, having already made all the discoveries that made their lives and ours to be such as you could only dream of, a real paradise, some of us decided to turn to even more challenging experiments. We decided to create living beings. We made all sorts of creatures. Some scientists experimented with the aquatic beings in our waters. Taking cells from them and creating similar beings in test tubes in our laboratories. Others duplicated the existing animals and even took matter from different animals and created totally new species. These experiments were a great success but also met with a great deal of opposition within our society, as many people were already against those experiments we scientists were doing. Though some of these animals were beautiful and harmless and friendly, others were ugly, very hostile, dangerous and ferocious, or horrible to look at. Some were quite intelligent, while others were totally dumb, useless and utterly pitiful. These had life in them, but had neither sight nor hearing, neither feeling nor power of speech, and could not move. Such beings were often destroyed and research in them was discontinued. I myself created one such dangerous animal. It was quite similar to the tigers now existing on earth. Unfortunately my laboratory was in a building that was adjoining my home. The beast that I created escaped, entered my house and savaged my young daughter, whose age was about eight of your earth years. My daughter's death caused a great outcry that resulted in our government ordering all scientists to stop their experiments. You see, such brutal deaths no longer occurred in our world. Murders did not exist, accidents were rare and virtually unheard of in some countries, people only died of old age. We obeyed our government and the experiments on live creature creation were subsequently stopped. However we continued with our research in other avenues, concentrating on life itself, its diseases and its shortness. It was thus that we stumbled on one of our most capital discoveries, how to prolong our lives. We discovered that inside a muscle located in a certain part of the humanoid anatomy, there is a tiny muscle about one and half centimeters long and half a centimeter wide. If this tiny muscle is cut off, the aging process of the body is stopped and physical longevity is more than ten times increased. A person that undergoes such an operation could then live a minimum of a thousand earth years and a maximum of two thousand, with perfect health and their looks intact. After which time, the muscle would slowly have grown back to its initial size. If anyone wished to live even further, they only had to have the operation redone. We, the scientists who made that discovery were the first to undergo the operation ourselves. Some other citizens who wished to try it took a chance, while the majority of the population was opposed to such practices. But when later generations verified that we indeed had lived to 2,000 years with all our physical and mental faculties intact and performing to their highest degree possible, with the ability to still reproduce whenever we wished, the method was finally unanimously adopted. It became known as the secret of eternity. With the secret of eternity, our scientists were able to use their genius as long as they wished. More discoveries were made, and giant bounds were made scientifically. Now we had also begun effectuating interplanetary travel right at the epoch when we had first begun experimenting with creating living creatures. At that time as we had begun to visit the three moons around our planet, we had realized that intelligent humanoid beings from other worlds had been also visiting, not only those moons, but our planet itself, without however having contacted us. On our planet there were originally three humanoid ethnic groups, those with a dark brown skin complexion. You may call them blacks as you do on earth. Those with a pink complexion, the whites, and those with a complexion between the black and white, the red, who resembled those who inhabit the Indian continent on earth. So on our planet, they looked like those now existing on earth, but also different. We believe in a god and we believed that we were gods, because we had old scriptures about our existence. 
they said that God had created us to be and to look exactly like Himself. For a long time already, we had made it our religion to study ourselves and everything around us, in order to get to know our God. For we were taught that, to find and know our God we had to look within ourselves. This is what we recommend you to do too. After we had discovered the secret of eternity, the beings that we had discovered to have been visiting our moons finally made contact with our government, and they were welcomed and accepted. They are those of the race of the small ones with slanted eyes whom you met today on the bridge of this vessel, the green race. They said that they had come from Draconis. They came to us with a big mother ship and told us that it had landed itself on their planet with the preserved dead bodies of its previous owners in it. They told us that they had found messages informing them that they had been created in laboratories as well as ourselves and people living in two planets of the two Sirius systems, and people of Orion and the Pleiades, whom they said looked like the people of our planet. They proposed to share all their knowledge with us if we would form an alliance with them. While many of our people never believed their story about us all having been created by the same creators, and that was obvious since even though they were humanoids, they looked so different from us, our government and theirs formed an alliance, and we began trading economically and scientifically with them. As well as new scientific knowledge, these green newcomers brought us a method from their ancient scriptures, that allowed us to understand our holy scriptures even better. We thus understood why we had been taught for millennia that we were gods. And we learnt a method left to us by our ancestors enabling us to create life, perfect life, very quickly with the power from within ourselves and with our words, coupled with that power. We began, on our own and with the renewed permission of our government, to create android humanoid beings, using this sacred wisdom. These were different biological beings that lived only to serve us and whose only pleasure was to be in our service, but there is a good reason for this particular nature. You already know about those types of beings, as your grandfather demonstrated to you. And do remember that this time, we were only allowed to create humanoids, not animals. With some of the new knowledge brought by the scientists of Draconis, we developed a very sophisticated method of education that virtually turned all our people into geniuses. These newcomers also had at their disposal another means of creating their own androids. They had huge machines that made perfect metal skeletons and everything needed in a human anatomy, except for blood, skin and muscles. They made them to grow on those metal skeletons. But their biological robots, unlike ours had no spirit in them, and their owners did not treat them with consideration in the way we did ours. We objected to this and let our feelings be known to our new allies, and that was the beginning of our descent with some of them. For not only did they misuse their own biological robots, they also began to use ours in the same manner. The other subject of descent was over divine laws. While we fully respected the laws and practiced our belief in God within, the newcomers declared that they had long rejected all beliefs in God, and had adopted science only as their religion, and since it had made them as God thus equal to him, they had rejected him altogether. Thus though having been equally left with the same knowledge of the divine mysteries as us, the newcomers had abandoned them and even made a law against practicing them in their home world, they were now a totally atheist people. They defiantly practiced all deviated corporal acts and perversions forbidden by divine law before us, not only between themselves but also on their defenseless biological robots as well as our own androids. In our first three thousand years of longevity after discovering the secret of eternity, we had managed to build more powerful vessels for interstellar travel. We thus traveled for the first time to the two Sirius, to Orion and the Pleiades and made contact with those who lived in those systems. They joined our alliance and together, we began exploring our respective galaxies. But us scientists, decided to begin our experiments again in order to create animal, vegetal and humanoid life. Our government agreed to let us continue these particular experiments, provided we did them elsewhere, on other deserted planets for example. The teams of creators now comprised, as well as people from our planet, those from the planets of Draconis, of the two Sirius, of Orion and of the Pleiades, among them were the Greens as we called them. It was very easy for us to prepare the many moons and planets of our solar system for creation of life. But we did not immediately meet with success, 
for we realized often that though some vegetation could thrive on some of those planets, humanoid life could not. Also some of the planets were too close to the suns whose rays were dangerous to humanoid or vegetal life, sometimes both. The renegades. But we had even worse enemies than nature and the element, many of the newcomers, those from Draconis and some from the two Sirius, had disagreed with some clauses and conditions of the new creation act, which was part of the alliance deed. Together with categorically refusing to accept the divine side of our inheritance and refusing to believe in God, and to follow the divine laws, together with ignoring our advice not to use androids and biological robots for their carnal pleasure and depraved acts, they also opposed the law that stipulated that all humanoids being successfully created jointly by all of us should be left to evolve freely on their own after a while. And though we might monitor their progress, we should not interfere in their affairs, or in their governments in any way. Or try to take them over, or subject them to our rule in any manner whatsoever. And finally the decree that we should never interbreed with them, for the sake of our scientific experiment, and the perfect and absolute proof of the success of our work of creation. These people proposed that, instead of giving any beings that we would eventually create together the same teachings that we were given by our own creators concerning our divine state, we should give them limited freedom and limited education, and get them to worship us as gods. On our categorical refusal of these proposals, those protesters, not only did they separate from us, but they withdrew from the alliance altogether. Of all the newcomers, just the representatives of one planet, on the advice from their superiors, chose unanimously to remain in the alliance. The rest, also looking like them, who represented another small solar system, were divided in their opinions, and as a result, a deadly intergalactic war with these renegades ensued. A book was written about these wars. It was the first part of the Chronicles, which became known in our world as, the Book of the Wars of Yahweh, or Jehovah. When that war first died down, a peace treaty was never signed. Thus without fighting, we remained in a state of cold war. How earth was created, or arranged those of the planet of the green race from Draconis, who sided with us, had to be evacuated to our own planets that became part of the alliance, leaving the enemies in their original planets. We thus began joint experiments anew with them, this time creating humanoid beings with them in laboratories. This time we decided to make hybrids of our mixed four races. The results were four races as you have on Earth. Those that looked like yourself, like Africans, those that looked like the Europeans, those that looked like the dwellers of India and those that looked like the dwellers of Japan. For though you have seen that I have a complexion like your own, but you have no doubt noticed that I am not really like the black men of Earth. There is still a difference between us. This was obviously the brown alien still speaking, and he was right about that, he and I looked different. Well to continue with our story, our enemies, the renegades, followed us everywhere we went to create, and always managed to corrupt and interfere with our creations. They took the direct approach by very simply bombarding the laboratories that we set up, killing many creators and the beings that we created in the process. And when they could not do this, they waited till we had left the new colonized planets. Then they came behind us and corrupted any teachings that we had given to those beings. Turning them against us, and installing themselves as gods over them, after either killing our watchers, the guardians that we had left behind to monitor the new creation's progress, or corrupting them to their way of thinking. And if they failed to exterminate or corrupt them all, they very simply sabotaged the whole scientific experiment by interbreeding with the new races created and making children with them, knowing that we would consider such colonies a failure. Believe me, they knew what they were doing. When that happened we were always forced to move elsewhere, and we continued regardless to create, returning from time to time, visiting the former colonies, contacting some members of their communities to talk to them on our behalf, and tell them the truth about us and about the renegades. Sometimes some of our creations were faithful to us and respected our teachings, thus elevating themselves in our esteem. Others were excited into forming alliances with our enemies and to come to war against us. Since that time when we first succeeded in creating humanoids, till the time when we came to this part of the universe, we populated 499 planets, 499, all very similar to this earth. To all of them we taught our national language, which resembles ancient Hebrew. 
and the individual groups also taught their creations their own languages. The two Genesis. It was because of those renegades that we the scientists decided to leave our galaxies and to venture further onto a galaxy very many light years away from our own, where we hoped we would not be as easily exposed to the renegades' attacks as we had been till then. For that, we turned to the old writings of our long-gone ancestors in which their past exploits and adventures had been recorded. One in particular recounted how they had gone to a faraway galaxy in this universe where they had found a lot of empty space. There they had virtually created a whole solar system of their own, where they had successfully created living beings using the divine secrets in their possession, which secrets they had also passed on to us. That solar system is this one, and their creation work had taken place four billions of Earth years or so before our generation. Earth, as well as the other planets of this solar system, did not occupy the orbits they are rotating in now. That is what they meant by creating this solar system as they were going to completely change the way it looked. They caused almighty explosions that knocked the planets out of their former orbits, and into the position they wanted them to be. After that creation, Earth as well as the other planets, was initially mainly used for mining at that time. And it is from here that I shall begin to quote from the writings of your prophets and from your Bible, which is the book of the story of Earth and of the creation of its very first inhabitants, and of others that came later. For the description of the beginning of Earth that you have in your Bible took place in the time of our ancestors, not ours. And we simply taught that description to the Adam and Eve, the first couple of human beings, that were created by my personal group. But before I come to those writings, there is one thing to which I want to draw the attention of all who will read this message. When Moses and all the other prophets throughout the scriptures said sons of men they meant humanoid people who were not human beings of terrestrial origins. These are also referred to as the sons of the gods. And when they said children of men they usually meant the humans of terrestrial origin. Such an appellation is particularly used in the book of Daniel to describe the heavenly messenger or angelic being that saved Daniel and his companions from the furnace. Extraterrestrial beings, some good and others bad were also called watchers by early biblical writers. The first Genesis. Now let us go to the Bible. It is written in your Bible, in the beginning a lionin created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was unformed and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of a lion and hovered upon the face of the deep, and a lion and said, Let there be light and there was light. Genesis 1 1 3. The above lines, which are the first three lines of your Bible, are the description of the time when our ancestors actually came into this sector of the universe. Not the time of the creation of the Adamic humanoids, who are the ones you all are now. It is the beginning and part of a whole different set of records. So we shall continue this sentence through the Genesis of Abraham which is still existent on earth in the Book of Mormon. And there stood among them one that was similar to God, and he said to those who were with him, We will go down, for there is space there. We will take of these materials, and we will make an earth. Abraham 3:24. When our ancestors came, nothing in this small part of the universe was as it can be seen today. So they took their own materials, the same that they had used to do similar work elsewhere, and came and shaped and displaced, not only Earth and this whole solar system. The whole work was to try and change the very galaxy in which this Earth is, the Milky Way. In space, they released chemicals that exploded in almighty explosions when these all came together, and this galaxy took shape as it is now, and this little solar system right at its inner borders was born, or reshaped to look like it does now. And that took a very long time to accomplish. So if you wish, there was truly a big bang if I may quote that human expression. But it did not occur by itself as the learned people of this planet insist on affirming. It was provoked. Explosions were made in this area of the universe. The power of the conflagration sent billions of particles hurtling toward the void. Those were to be part of and become the solar systems of this galaxy. Also notice the following words. And the spirit of a lion in hovered over the face of the deep, and a lion in said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1 1 3. Now the word a lion in is plural. In Hebrew it means those from above, and that, our ancestors indeed were. 
They traveled a very long time and came to this sector of the universe. At that time this solar system looked totally different. It too had to be virtually artificially shaped, or created in order for it to look like they wanted it to. So the works that were done to prepare the planet Earth, for humanity, were not done by immaterial, ethereal or imaginary beings, who were thus quoted saying, then Elianon said, let us go down. And they descended in the beginning. The spirit hovering over the face of the deep means just that, flying in their vessels, they made atmospheric tests before descending on the planet and establishing themselves on it. Of course the work was done in stages by different groups of people, though they too had discovered the same secret of eternity, that we, too, only discovered some 25,000 earth years ago, 25.000. Long periods of time passed between each time. Once the solar system looked satisfactory to them, they themselves used chemicals to create huge deposits of all the metals and gases they needed, these taking only a few years to be formed. And though you on Earth are only adapted to your Earth's atmosphere, some beings in many planets of our alliance can work in different conditions, in pure hydrogen and other gases that are fatal to you, for example. Others are adapted to and used to very low and very high temperatures. So the teams of scientists spread throughout the planets of this solar system accordingly. Remains of their bases can still be found to this day on Venus, Jupiter, Mars, and Earth's moon, Luna, as humans could discover in the coming millennia, when they would have advanced in their discoveries and space explorations. They will find evidence that some of those bases were underground on the above planets. But on Earth as on all the planets of this solar system, they created living beings that they used to help them with their mining work. But to create these human androids on Earth more work was needed, and the planet needed to be adapted accordingly. Here is the proper way in which this passage appears in our former ancestors' annals. In the beginning after our creation of the first firmament and the continents on the planet Terra, it was unformed and void. It was covered in darkness and ice. And we said, this planet is too dark, too cold and too far from its sun. Therefore we shall move it closer to the sun and there shall be light and our creation would have a better chance of survival. This was done and there was more light and more warmth. Let us go back to your Bible where it is written. And Elianon saw the light that it was good, and Elianon divided the light from the darkness. And Elianon called the light day, and the darkness they called night. And there was evening and there was morning, one day. The earth was then on a different orbit, and had to be moved a bit closer to the sun. This work of moving the earth from its former orbit took a very long time, in fact it took exactly 1000 earth years to be accomplished. For time was then still calculated as we calculated ours in our world. To us 1000 earth years equal one of our days as we call them. Tests were being done on the light of the sun and its effects on the planet earth and the effect it could have on life. Every time the planet was moved, tests and experiments were made, until these explorers and creators decided finally that earth was at a perfect and safe distance from the sun, and its rays would not be harmful to the new life forms they wanted to create. And that, as well as being harmless, the sun would be useful for the planet and the air would become breathable. For that, it is written. And Elianon saw the light, that it was good. This planet had to be perfect for their work. When the sun was at a safe distance, the temperature of the whole planet was the same and steady 68 degrees. And as the whole of earth was covered in thick high peaks of snow, this snow began to melt, and with proper sunlight, the sky appeared, a beautiful firmament became visible. This slow process took another thousand earth years. And Elianon called the firmament heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. Genesis 1 6-8 so the first record of that story was written by our Adam, the one we created, as we instructed him to. The first Adam created by our ancestors was encouraged to call them Elianon simply because they, like us, refused to distinguish themselves from each other. And like us, refused to tell him exactly where they came from. For they, as usual with us explorers from our world, had not written their names in their annals, distinguishing themselves only by what they did. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. 
and Elionen called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters they called the seas, Elionen saw that it was good. Elionen said, Let the dry land put forth grass, herb yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing after its kind, wherein is the seed thereof upon the earth. And it was so. And the land brought forth grass, and Elionen saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a third day. Genesis, 1-9-13. After two thousand years of preliminary work, they decided to create a continent. As you remember, the whole planet was now covered in large amounts of water, due to the melting of the ice caps. During this first occupation of Earth by our ancestors, only one single large continent was created. For that, huge underwater explosions were provoked with charges of explosives. As the explosions were very massive, miles deep ditches were dug, and the water covering the planet rushed in the ditches, thus allowing dry land to appear. And a large continent was thus created, the rest of the planet was covered in water. Of course there were a few insignificant islands off this continent. Note that the repetition of the expression and God saw that it was good indicates that these were not the only things and experiments that were done, and that some, from time to time, had to be destroyed if they were not a success, it was good should therefore be interpreted as meaning it was successful, satisfactory, acceptable, or safe. When this monumental work of atmospheric tests and the creation of the continent was finished, the next step was to prepare the whole surface of dry ground by adding all necessary chemicals for vegetal growth. So bases were established on the bare desolate and empty planet. And other scientists arrived, who came to prepare the air, the waters and the whole of the planet's surface with all the chemicals needed for animal, vegetal, aquatic and fowl lives. Nearly all chemical components now found on land and seas were added to speed up the process when possible. On land large amounts of soft water were available for drinking due to the melting of ice caps. After that, the scientists who created plants came and began to plant their creations. These scientists had developed their work to a very fine art. And their talents can be observed in the beautiful varieties of plants and vegetation now on earth. This work that was not easy at all, also took a very, very long time, another thousand earth years. The creation of these plants was a new experiment that had never been tried by us before. And as the creation was going to be done only once, the aim was to create herbs, plants and trees that had, and produced their own seeds, that would grow into the same kind of plants when planted. In fact, the same aim of all the creation was to create animals, plants fowl, aquatic and human beings that reproduced themselves. Tests made on these plants proved that the work had been a resounding success. The creation of the ocean and land, their chemical preparation and the successful implantation of vegetal life took another 1,000 years. The solar system was properly set up with planets placed in the order similar to the one they are in now. And Elionen said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Elionen made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elionen set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elionen saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. Genesis 1 14-19 Our ancestor creators, after having seen that the plants had adapted and the planet had begun to look so good, went on to arrange the solar systems of this galaxy and the planets of this solar system in different orbits. So that their movement on rapport with Earth may create and determine the calculation of Earth times, seasons and climates, all that for the better profit of Earth. That work was similar to the one that was done when Earth had been moved from its original orbit. For our old annals clearly say. The planets of that solar system were then moved to new orbits around their sun to profit the new favorite planet. That planet, that was none other but this Earth, had two moons orbiting it at that time. The smaller one was sent hurtling into outer space, away from Earth, in the solar system and the larger one was moved in order to give more light to the planet at nights. That work also took another thousand years. 
As the sea and river waters were also prepared for all marine and various aquatic life, the scientists whose sole specialty was to create aquatic life forms of all kinds came and also began their work. And all the beautiful creatures they made did them justice. Many of them of course do no longer exist now. Other scientists who created fowls, insects, reptiles and many different kinds of animals came. These were those who created dinosaurs and big flying creatures. That work was also very difficult. As we know, these creatures, just like the plants had to be able to reproduce themselves. And as all these were created in laboratories, it took them another thousand earth years to perfect their creations. But not all animals were created then, in the sixth thousandth year after they had first begun their work, they created farm and domestic animals. And it is only after these that they began to create human beings. These first ones were made, solely using the divine secrets that they knew. Your grandfather demonstrated to you how that could be done. And we were the ones who taught him how to do it. Well, our ancestors created the very first human beings ever to live on this planet, then after one billion earth years, they became involved in an intergalactic war with some very powerful alien enemies, who began attacking their colonies all over this universe. That long and bloody war, which lasted 100 years on this planet Earth, was lost, and our ancestors evacuated some of the few of their creations that were left after. Those people were taken to populate a new moon that they had already prepared elsewhere away from this galaxy. Those humans by then had evolved greatly, having attained high technological knowledge. The ones that were left behind were reduced to the state of savages, serving those alien victors. Thus our people stayed away from Earth for half a billion Earth years. Then Earth was colonized by a totally different race of hairy ape-like aliens that looked quite like the gorillas you have now, but who walked straightened like Earth's human beings. They too stayed half a billion Earth years, after which they too were overcome by yet another alien race in a violent nuclear war. That war resulted in Earth being moved out of its orbit again and away from the Sun, because these new aliens could not very well adapt to the conditions existing then. And because of that war all life existing then on Earth perished, humans and occupying aliens alike. When displacing Earth from its orbit they also did the same to the other planets. These were then heavily mined for their gases and minerals. But people on our world always considered Earth to be part of our alliance and followed all events taking place on it. Again after 500 millions of Earth years of reign of these alien occupiers, they too were involved in another deadly intergalactic nuclear war with another group of enemies. Earth was bombarded and all alien life was exterminated from it. The war was so violent that the planets of this solar system were also displaced from their new orbits by those who happened to occupy them. Later, Earth was occupied again by a race of fugitive alien slaves, also different from humanoid beings. But these occupied Earth for only 5,000 Earth years, and their pursuers caught up with them. And as these had no interest in the planet, they took those they could catch and exterminated the rest by releasing gases that were toxic to them. Our people came again and replaced the planets in their former orbits. That work finished and the slow recovery of planet Earth began. Thus you see that your archaeologists have discovered many different kinds of fossils and skulls of different shapes, forms and sizes. But there was absolutely no evolution from one kind of beings to another. They only occupied this planet at different times. But as you already know and as I shall explain it later on again, there was interbreeding between some earth dwellers and different colonists. Well for 295 million years earth stayed empty covered in miles-high ice caps. During that time another treaty was drawn and Earth with this solar system were again universally declared our property. And for 795 million years more, Earth remained desolate. But our enemies, the renegades, who had also decided to come to this area of the universe to create their own solar system, illegally established bases on Earth, on its moon Luna, on Mars and on Venus, allegedly to be closer to their place of work for their future solar system. And on top of that they also freely mined the planets of their resources. As our people knew that their enemy's true aim was to occupy Earth again, they ordered them to leave. They refused and were found to be all prepared and ready for war. 
Again an intergalactic war in which we were involved against the renegades ensued, which ended with Earth again witnessing another nuclear disaster. That war is also mentioned in the books of the Wars of Jehovah. This time, our people won. The enemies left and this solar system was once more abandoned and left to recover naturally. But both sides had been very badly weakened by the wars. After losing most of their eminent scientists, our people in our world were for a long time reduced back to a primitive state, a state primitive like the present level in which you are now on earth and that brings us to our own time properly. The second Genesis and our Adam. We also again evolved in our world. In what took us a short 175,000 earth years, we began our biological researches. We also in our turn discovered the secret muscle of eternity, and then moved on to genetic engineering in a big way. This genetic engineering prompted us to come to this long-abandoned property of ours, your solar system with its prettiest planet called Earth. I was part of that expedition and we came in my third thousandth year of life, after we discovered the secret of eternity. That is therefore how the people from our alliance of planets again came back to Earth and did the same work that our ancestors had already done before. This was of course the second time a group of creators had come with the sole main aim of creating life on Earth. We had to do all the previous work all over again. This time we had all the writings and calculations that our ancestors had left behind and we followed those, only bringing changes where absolutely necessary. But our work was still difficult because we also had to go through deciphering their early form of our language, and the scientific terms that we used differed sometimes from theirs. But our work was still much shorter than theirs. There were a total of seven bases established on the continents of Earth by us, and in these bases were created seven first couples that can all be designated by the names of Adam and Eve. But truly, they had different names on each base. These bases were whole big cities that extended the length of whole countries and comprised whole armies for our protection against the renegade enemies, huge laboratories in which worked scientists and researchers of all kinds, all experts in their fields. There were also schools with teachers in all disciplines for the beings that we created. This time we used two ways of creating. In Palestine we used the divine method of creating the first human male, while in the other laboratories, creation was done entirely in a scientific manner. Several times we used our own combined genetic materials for better success, when needed. So in our time, only the first woman and all the rest of animals and living human beings, and vegetal life that we created in Palestine were created in laboratories. The first man, our Adam, was a golem that we created using the divine mysteries. Out of him came the genetic material with which his wife Eve was created. Eve's ovules were first used to create the first couples of humans in all the other laboratories that were scattered throughout Earth. So you see that two records of two different creative expeditions were written down by our Adam, the golem that we created. The first record was the record of the work done by our ancestors. The second one was of the work done by us. There would have been several records from all continents of the story of the creation work that we did here on Earth if those beings we created in the other laboratories on the other continents had cared to write about us too, only, they did not. But Moses, who recopied those old writings, decided to condense both stories into one, and then he made a mistake by writing Elohim instead of Elionin, because in his country of origin, many gods were then being worshipped and mentioned, and the creators were now firmly worshipped as gods anyway. Those are two very different words. They are all plural words in Hebrew. Elohim means the gods. While Elionin means those from above or those who came from above, or those who came from the sky. Elionin designates an indeterminate number of people, while the word God can designate one entity or one person only. So when that story was told it was about a group, a race of creators, highly evolved people, who had come to create life on a planet that was then not inhabited, and the conditions of which at that time could not support life. It was the story of how this planet was prepared and made capable of supporting intelligent, artificially created human life. Well, when we came, Earth was situated quite level to the moons of Jupiter. In the Genesis of Adam, before Moses condensed the two stories, it was thus written. In the beginning before I was created, 
when a lionin came to create life on earth, the earth was void and covered in deep waters and darkness, and the wind machines of a lionin hovered over the face of the deep waters. Genesis 1 1 2. So you see, this second Adam did not describe the actual creation of the earth, only the work that was done on the earth that had already existed for billions of years. The wind machines, of course, designated are interstellar space vessels. At the appropriate temperatures and with our help, the ice caps melted, and this time we decided to create several continents. New explosions were carried out, and the original continent was split in smaller ones. We spent another thousand years doing this, resulting in more than one ocean and more than one continent. From the time when we arrived to the time when we succeeded in creating this first Adam by using the divine mysteries, only six thousand years passed. He was created as a baby. Creating our first woman. After we created our first Adam, genetic material was taken from him to be used in the creation of the first Eve. When that was done, Adam was a child of seven years of age. The Bible describes the surgical operation done on Adam thus. And Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh thereof. And the ribs, which Eliannin had taken from the man, made he a woman, and he brought her unto the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Genesis, 2 21-23. There, all is clear. The passage that I have just quoted clearly states that the first Eve was genetically created, and that creation was totally different from the first Adams. In order to create her, we performed a highly sophisticated surgical operation on Adam under total anesthesia. And with cells from him we made the first Eve. But such a type of genetic DNA handling was child's play to us, compared to the unimaginable, difficult and scientifically impossible process we used for the creation of the first Adam. You will notice of course that the third person singular is used here, because those who translated the text used Elohim, which they interpreted as God, instead of the gods. Then the following passage of the Bible describes how we created the human beings in the other six laboratories. And Elianon said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and Elianon created man in his own image, in the image of Elianon created they him, male and female created they them. Genesis 1 26-27, actually, the original words were, let us make the human race this is also very clear. Genetic materials from us were also used in the other laboratories where the most challenging of our work then took place. In our laboratories, we had to create the same conditions as those found in the wombs of our female colleagues. Remember, our aim in coming to create here this time, was to create humanoids formed of our four inter mixed races. And we created the beings. After many failures, we created another six pairs of perfect children in laboratories, each couple comprised a little boy and a little girl. The above two verses also serve to indicate what the Creator mentioned in the Bible looked like, if it still needs be, after all that I have told you so far. So we ask those who deem themselves learned on earth now, and who preach the theory of evolution, are they trying to say that we, the Creators were apes, seeing that we created man in our image? Trying to get people to believe the theory of evolution, is like trying to convince them that a stick of wood, if dipped thousands of years in water shall become a fish. That is impossible. Adam and Eve's first children were quadruplets. The first children of our first Adam and Eve were quadruplets. This fact is not mentioned in the contemporary versions of the Bible, but it is very clear to those who can read the ancient Hebrew form, in which that passage was written. There were Cain, Abel and two girls. As we were still closely studying this first couple, we treated the woman with fertility medicines, to encourage mass production of ovules. Those were fertilized with Adam's sperm that we took from him. Four fetuses were the result of this treatment. Note that we were doing this, first as scientists, and our work was similar to the experiments earth scientists are now doing all the time with apes in their laboratories. The fetuses were completely brought to term in our sophisticated laboratory. 
the same procedure was carried out on all the over six couples that were created in the other six laboratories. Thus from some couples we produced up to ten babies at a time, the fetuses being incubated, inside large artificial womb-like machines only, in order to ensure their survival. All fertilizations were done in vitro. Only later on, after each couple had produced up to 50 sets of children within five years, did we teach and allow them to mate naturally, freeing them from the laboratories. But right from the start they were encouraged to bond with their children, getting them to visit them while they were incubating. You may rightfully call it mass breeding. All those children were then educated in the schools by the teachers that were amongst us. Within three centuries, as well as the creators, each continent had millions of inhabitants, all descendants of these seven couples created by us. These were highly evolved people. All of them lived long lives because we had given them all the scientific knowledge that we had, including the secret of eternity. They were our obedient and faithful children, living in harmony and following all the laws that we had given them about God, which laws we ourselves obeyed also. We also taught them the divine mysteries that our loving ancestors had left us. The Serpent Do not forget that we came to this sector of the universe for scientific purposes, and our desire was to create a new race made of our combined genes. It was a perilous quest which was regularly hampered by wars between our worlds and those of the renegades. It had taken us thousands of years of trying, before we managed to create a brand new race of living beings that we call the human race. It had taken us thousands of years of research, of eliminating deadly diseases, and genetic flaws from our four races. It had taken a lot of cleansing and purification before we finally chose the information that was to be instilled in the build of this pooled genetic material in order to create the new race. Of course many embryos and children had to be destroyed over and over again until we were satisfied with the results. And as we had agreed beforehand, we had to ensure that the new race remained pure. That meant that none of us were allowed to mate with any of the new beings created, because if any of the flaws that we had so painstakingly removed were reintroduced, the experiment would have had to be deemed a failure again. All the teams of creators, scientists, teachers and others from our world who were with us respected this strict law, and never interfered with our creation. Three hundred years after our first man was created, after deciding that our experiment was a perfect success, and each couple having over one million descendants, we resolved to move on and begin our work of creation on another deserted planet. So we designated seven teams or armies of watchers, instructing them to monitor the progress of our human creation and not to interfere in any way in their evolution. Instead, they had to protect them only from our renegade enemies, and to intervene only in case of any inner wars that threatened the total extinction of this whole new human race. But within a century of our departure, the renegades moved in, contacted the Watchers as they had already done on the other planets where we had created life and their work of sabotage began. They made the same proposals to these Watchers as they had done to the others, on the other planets before Earth. This time, the Watchers that allied themselves to them surpassed in number those who remained loyal to us. A war broke out between both factions, and the Renegades won. Some Watchers managed to escape and join us, the rest were murdered. These renegades are the ones designated in the Bible as the serpent. But before these events, and at the time when the creation of the first seven couples was taking place, there had finally been an improvement in intergalactic relations with the many planets of our enemies. After thousands of years of talks, a peace and trading treaty was finally signed and we began trading diplomatically and economically with them again. But when the renegade armies were briefed of these events, the green ones mainly from Procyon and Draconis categorically refused to end the hostilities and to resume relations with us as they were again entreated to. To them, the war shall remain an eternal one, as they informed us. They all went to an uninhabited, deserted planet in this universe that they artificially adapted into which they moved and made their permanent home. There they established their own government and declared themselves sworn enemies of our alliance, of our colonies, and of any new allies that we might make in the future. They, like us were eternal, highly evolved geniuses who vowed to fight us to the death, 
and rid existence of all of us and of all the beings that we will ever create and who did not side up with them. They constantly updated their scientific discoveries and methods of propulsion. They had unscrupulous spies in our world who informed them of any new discoveries that we made. They therefore, were the same renegades that had sabotaged our work in our colonial planets, and they were the same ones who came to Earth 100 years after we left. They look exactly like the two navigators that you have met on the bridge of this vessel we travel on, and who too, descend from the Procyon and Draconis citizens who joined the Alliance. These renegades are also those whose aim is to establish themselves as gods over our creations, wherever they happen to be. For since separating from us, they have never succeeded in creating their own purely biological beings, or even any golems the way we do, using the divine mysteries. Even though they can make biological robots, the skeletons of these are made of a natural-looking but synthetic material, and these robots are totally devoid of free will. Well, they established their own bases on Earth after they corrupted our Watchers. Now, know that all the renegades have above them four supreme leaders, all of them originaries of Procyon. Number one is Kingu, the one who dubbed himself the Enlightener, the Giver of the Light, and whom you on Earth call Lucifer. He established his bases mainly on the tops of high mountains. The second one established his bases deep in the oceans and the seas, he is called Namtar. The children of the people that we created named him Leviathan, after one of the gigantic sea beings created by our ancestors. The third is Tiamat, the one known later as Ha Satan the Tempter. And finally, the fourth one is Azag, known on earth as Belial. These four, all of royal blood from their original planets are mad, ruthless criminal geniuses at the head of millions of other defective royal representatives of all the royal families of many galaxies with all their cohorts. Notice those names used for them on earth, which are Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan, and Belial, are not even their real names, just attributes. Their real ones are the ones I gave above. So their true names are given above for the first time, learn to call them by their proper names. They would stop at nothing to achieve their aims. They are at the head of powerful kings, dukes, princes, and prelates, marquises, presidents, earls, and counts, and also knight, all of these at the head of billions of legions of highly skilled eternal armies. In fifty of our colony planets, they have left nothing but debauchery, wickedness, nuclear destruction and holocausts. They have used the same tactic everywhere they have gone. They appear to people, claiming to bring peace and universal love. And they make promises that they very well know they would never keep. They assume our identities, claim that they are the ones who created our people whomever they happen to be. And then they begin to give them teachings contrary to those that we had previously given, and they make them the sort of promises and offers that are very hard to resist. Then they get them to practice all sorts of perversions, immoralities and crimes. They teach them not to have any respect toward the lives of the unborn ones and finally persuade them to deny their divine state by persuading them that there is no God. And worse of all, they interbreed with them. And once they have done this they disappear, leaving nothing behind them but confusion, desolation, ruthless atheism and madness. They have always told the same stories, and we can virtually predict exactly what they are going to tell their next contactees, or if we may use the proper term, their next victims. But this time we have decided to fight back and use the same method of contact as them. Whenever they contact someone on earth from now on, we will also contact someone, to expose that person and give our children of earth the right to chose who they want to follow, us Elianin, their true creators, or the so-called renegade Elohims who did not create this earth and who have no legal galactic claim to it. That is why we are here and giving you this message. Because they also are now in the process of contacting a man in France, and giving him their message of sabotage and lies. If those lies are heeded, it will lead to another global catastrophe happening on earth as has already happened before, and on the other planets of this universe I have told you about. Now once and for all, what truly happened and why was the big flood provoked, and who exactly did what? The other ring leaders. Know therefore that the serpent, as well as the four I have already told you about, namely Lucifer, Leviathan Satan, and Belial, 
comprised the following princes who were the leaders of the Watchers. Samyaza, Astakifa, Arman, Kakoba, Tora, Rumiat, Danal, Nuka, Baruka, Erzaz, Armas, Batari, Bazasa, Awana, Simatisi, Ayata, Tuma, Ta, Ruma, Izaza. There were also officers who had been heads of armies with millions of others at their command, and at their head were Yekum, Kesub, Tenemu, Kosyad, Amazarak, Urukabram, Akib, Tami, Gadril, Ramu, Azka, Sarakmi, Aza, Anane, Zavob, Samsava, Erta, Yomaya, Araza, Barkai, and Asarad. Those are the ringleaders amongst the watchers who, with their armies proceeded to defile and destroy the pure human race that we had so painstakingly and lovingly created. When they later presented themselves to humans, they added El as a suffix to their names to sound more divine, since El means God, but what exactly happened? Kingu, or Lucifer as you call him on earth, came to the commanders of the watchers that we had left on earth to guard the human race. He tempted them to make a pact with him and his companions, urging them to rebel and unite with him against us. He promised them to make them all gods if they allied with him and went to fight us, Elianen, in order to appropriate all the planets that were part of our alliance and to chase us out of our galaxies. That pact is clearly described in the 18th chapter of the Book of Enoch. And he told them that, to show that they were willing to ally themselves to him, they should first disobey the express order that was given them not to indulge into carnal intercourse with human beings, and to marry human girls, and the female watchers to marry human males. Nearly all of them refused Kingu's, Lucifer's, offer and reported back to us. But of these watchers, two hundred headed by the ones I just named succumbed with those who served under them. And when these extraterrestrial watchers, the biblical angels, the children of heaven, began to be tempted, and after they had a proper look at the human ladies, they admitted that they were very beautiful, as it is written. And they said to one another, Let us choose ourselves women from among the human race, and let us have children with them. But Samyaza their leader told them, I fear that you may not accomplish your design. For if you did, I would be the only one to suffer punishment of your crime, unless we make a mutual pact in which you shall all swear to me that we all share equally the penalty of our action but they answered, dot we swear it to you. The Book of Enoch. The Watchers knew very well the consequences of such a rebellion, since becoming the allies of the renegades meant they would be cut off from their world and suffer the same fate as the renegades if their attempt at taking over our galaxies failed. And Samyaza as their leader was the one who was contacted by Kingu, Lucifer. And as the leader, he knew that he would be asked to account for the behavior of their armies so he wanted to make sure that they did not go back on their word and leave him alone to face the punishment, he decided to make sure that they were all equally guilty. He wanted their oath to tie them also to the sentence that was decreed on the renegades at the time of the Great Rebellion. And for that they first had to break all the government and divine laws to which they had all been submitted until then. They all flew to the top of a mountain where Lucifer and his companions had landed their vessels and made a pact with them. We swear to you, and we shall all covenant by mutual execrations, we shall change nothing to our design, we shall execute what we have resolved. And they swore and indulged with Samyaza and his companions the renegades and between themselves, in an orgy of homosexuality, perversions, bestiality and distasteful mutual deviations and execrations. And thus these watchers also became fallen angels, as the above acts were among those of the divine laws that were not to be broken. Once this was done Tiamat, or Satan, went straight to Adam and his wife and their sons and befriended them. While Adam, Eve and Cain with his two sisters began to socialize with him, Abel refused and separated himself from his family. The rest of the renegades, together with the former watchers, began contacting the humans and giving them different teachings as Lucifer, Leviathan Satan and Belial had instructed them to. Tiamat, Satan, Next came to Cain in person and of course gave him his doctrine, telling him that he and his companions were gods, and that he wanted to establish his religion on earth and wanted Cain to be his high priest. They made a pact that involved Cain killing Abel, and which led to him being made Master Mahan, or the great right hand and representative of Satan on earth. Of course, 
you understand that Abel had to die because he was going round warning the other humans about these new extraterrestrials and their doctrines and immoral teachings. And since their aim was the total corruption and destruction of the human race, they could not afford to have somebody going round and undermining and trying to scupper their sabotage activities. Cain after that pact married one of the lady extraterrestrial officers who were with Lucifer. The children they had immediately proved to be very different from normal human children. These were the ones that were called Nephilim by the humans. Some were giants physically others were born with inherited physiological and mental illnesses not suffered by the pure humans. Others were grossly deformed with two heads and three eyes on each head, and sometimes whole body parts were missing. Virtually all of them had six toes and six fingers on each foot and hand. Thus, what we the creators had feared, happened. The pure race was again corrupted. Bad genes and deadly diseases that we had taken so long to eliminate from this new race began to be reintroduced in their children and the results were disastrous. Tiamat, Satan, then decided to make Adam and his wife break the laws before the eyes of their people, because they were respected, venerated and held in high esteem by the other pure humans. He reasoned that if they saw Adam himself break the laws they would easily be convinced to break them too. So he sent the ex-watcher Gadrel to actually seduce Eve and to have sexual intercourse with her. He, in his turn, convinced her to tell Adam to do the same, telling him the story that you well know as it is written in the Bible. And so Eve did. She told him that the watcher had introduced her to perverted books and sexual practices that she did not even know existed and she showed him those. There is another matter we wish to enlighten humanity on. Adam, his wife and his sons had first been taught the type of worship of God that was later given to the Hebrews. There was one of us, one who had undergone the eternity operation and who was therefore an eternal being of our planet, an expert in religious matters who had been left on earth with the watchers, after the creators left. That being is named as Melchizedek in your holy Bible. He remained on earth for a very, very long time observing many events, preparing and measuring lands for future generations of our faithful humans on earth. His work was mostly about divine matters, and as such, he was a high priest. But he came to be a great king, living in what was then called Salem. The humans called him the King of Peace, and they knew that he was not a native of earth. He had ordained Adam, Abel, and Cain in the first priesthood order that ever existed, and for a long while they were very good, God-fearing people, Cain included. When Tiamat came and perverted Cain, he and Abel were both forty years old. So any idea that they were children when Cain killed Abel is wrong. For a long while they took it in turns to officiate in the temple that was built at that time, that temple stood exactly where King Solomon later built his first temple. It is at the same place where the Hebrew people still go to pray at the ruins of the Herodian temple now. So the two famous offerings and sacrifices mentioned in the Bible, that were done by the two brothers before Abel's murder, were true priestly ones. It happened that, after Cain had been corrupted and ordained by Tiamat, he again came to our temple when Melchizedek was there and tried to make the ritual sacrifice. Only, Melchizedek already knew what he had done, rejected his sacrifice, forbid him from offering it, and ordered him out of the temple. It is then that he asked him where his brother was, and humanity knows Cain's answer. It was therefore Melchizedek who also confronted Adam and his wife, and later chased them from the city we had built for them, and where Adam was the leader of the humans. Here, I shall stop with my story today as we have just received news from our watcher in France. Come tomorrow to the cocoa plantation and we shall continue. I lay still on my bed with my eyes wide open. My head was throbbing and, for an unknown reason, I was seized with stomach cramps. I began rolling on my bed uttering what I can only call a silent scream, as I did not want my grandmother to hear me moaning. If I did, she would rush to my bedroom, take me back with her to her bed, and most of all she would not want to leave my side the following day. I could not allow that to happen if I wanted to continue meeting my friends. So far, I had managed to hide what was happening from her. How well, I did not know, because she had begun to watch me very closely, asking me how I had spent my day and if I were quite well. So far, 
Nobody in the village had told her of my quotidian trips to the cocoa plantation, and I wondered just how long they would resist their customary curiosity, and their need to know what everybody else in the village was doing. In our village it was virtually considered people's right to know the affairs of others. If someone was sitting outside their house and saw another person passing, and it looked as though they were going somewhere interesting by being dressed in their best clothes, they would not fail to first politely greet the person, and then ask them where they were going. The person would patiently stop and tell them. That would happen with every person sitting or standing outside and those they came across on the road itself. It is tradition and it is expected to happen. But I could not tell my grandmother, and I certainly, simply could not go around telling my story to the villagers. To begin with it was too incredible, and they would all call me a witch as usual. Furthermore, my Alianin friends had told me to keep the story to myself until I was ready to write it. My intuition told me that I had better listen to that advice. I always know when to keep my mouth shut, and now was one of those times.